Hello, I'm John Dodge, Community Manager of the Enterprise CIO Forum, and today I am here with Paul Mueller. He is Vice President of Strategic Marketing for HP Software. Hi, Paul. Hey, how are you doing, John? Very good. It's uh, great to have you here. How big is a cybercrime problem? It's such a great question, and the answer, simple answer, is we don't actually know. Um, one of the reasons for that is that many companies still mistakenly feel that by not disclosing, for example, breaches that they've been subject to, that they're somehow protecting the interests of their shareholders or, mm -hmm. in the case of governments and their departments, of the ministers or um, uh, representatives responsible for that. It is an area that we study closely, though. Um, annually, we publish a report uh, called the Cyber Risk Report in conjunction with the Poneman Institute. What we have found during that process is that it's a growing problem. The report um, that we indicated showed, shows that attacks are up 100% 2010 to 2012, which is a considerable number. Um, the complexity of the cybercrime problem is growing as well. Um, we found that it takes, uh, what it took 14 days to respond to and correct a security incident in 2010, 18 days in 2011, and is up to 24 days now, showing that Cyber crime itself is becoming a lot more subtle, a lot more complex, and more sophisticated in terms of how it's deployed. In answer to your specific question, to put dollars around this, we've found that it ranges, depending on the size and complexity of a company, anywhere from $1.3 million per attack to $56 million per attack. And I need to restate for those attacks that were declared as part of the study. Of course, there are many high profile attacks that we've probably heard about in the media that were not part of the study, and in those cases, the cost can be a lot higher. Uh, the great news is disclosures are up 19% year on year, so more people are reporting uh, those incidents. Uh, I will probably summarize my question with actually a report that came out of the um, 2012 workshop for the Economics of Information Security, a paper by Ross Anderson. And the conclusion of that paper was that cybercrime is the single biggest form of crime now if we take into account things like wire fraud, credit card fraud, they're all variations on cybercrime. Why bother stealing a $50 DVD player when you can steal 50,000 or 50 million and not be caught? Uh, the reality, how much are large enterprises at risk? Here's the good news. They're not at risk. It's a guarantee that they'll be breached. Um, the challenge is that a security professional, a CIO, needs to be right 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. The bad guys only need to be right once. So the, in our experience, not only will most organizations be breached, in many cases when we've gone in with, for example, with our security information event management solutions, we've found almost instantly that they're breached while we're actually in there helping them implement the solution. In other words, we detect that they've got an ongoing problem as we're putting in place monitoring, for example. What, what advice would you give on how large enterprises can protect themselves? Well, I guess a couple of things. The first is to recognize that I believe that sharing is important. Uh, in fact, we'll talk a little bit about some of the specific things we're doing to help that. Uh, don't hide the problem. Um, in fact, Heartland Payment Systems, who famously were breached fairly considerably with over 100 million, 100 million credit card records stolen, they uh, and their chief information security officer is, uh, in fact, only found out about the problem that they had by somebody else sharing breach-related mm -hmm. material with them. So it's very important to share. I think the other is to understand the sophistication of the modern cyber criminal. Let's be clear. The hacktivists, the people who want to mess with your website and make your day miserable, they're a problem, don't get me wrong, but they're a minor inconvenience compared to the modern cyber crime uh, that we're seeing now where people are making money from this. That cyber criminal has an attack life cycle that we need to understand. The whole process of research, infiltration, discovery, capture and exfiltration in the language of the trade, understanding how they go about their work and the marketplace they use to disseminate and monetize that information, I think is really important for the modern CIO. And if you could, what uh, tell me what HP's approach to security is? I'd summarize in three words. So, so in our view, this is not something that we do to a customer. It's something we do with a customer you know, in order to help them build that better enterprise together with them. It 
three steps I think about. The first is disrupt. We've got to disrupt the adversary. They are in there. They are probably penetrating your organization today. They've breached your, your defenses. So the first and most important thing is disrupt whatever it is they're doing and stem um, whatever pain the organization is feeling as a result. Then obviously we want to get into an ongoing regime of management raising the bar on security across every element of what we do, starting with building better applications that are more secure, inherently secure in the first place, hardening the perimeter, but also putting in place better detection inside the organization to ensure that if there are problems, they're detected early before major losses can occur. Increasingly, we're also finding one last important part of the strategy for us, which is what we call extension. Many organizations, especially the mid-size organization, in other words, they're big enough to be an interesting target, but maybe not big enough like a large bank to afford a full-time, highly professional information security team. They, we've increasingly found they need to extend or amplify their own capabilities, for example, with managed security services or with outside help to augment what it is they already have, uh, not necessarily to replace it, but again, to work together with them to build that stronger and better enterprise. We recently launched a couple of new capabilities that I think are really exciting. The most exciting for me personally is HP Threat Central. What we've done there is put in place a clearinghouse, if you like, for threat-related information. Enterprises can share ongoing threats, vulnerabilities that they've discovered within themselves with their peers to help build a greater sense of awareness and prevention of potential security problems before they come at risk. Um, this is actually, in some respects, inspired by what happens within the cybercrime community where they actually have social networks for sharing exploit information about you. We're fighting them back, sharing information within the good guy community. So we think that's a really important step and a really big breakthrough for the community. Uh, the second is in the area of uh, applications. 80% of the breaches experienced today originate in the application itself. Most people think they've got to buy a firewall to be secure. It's actually the app that's the real problem. Uh, we launched a capability we called ArcSight Application View, designed specifically to build an early warning system into your applications when, uh, when there's potential for those applications to be breached so that your security team can get on with plugging those holes and, and fixing the problem before a breach can actually occur. As well as a couple of new capabilities around something we call Risk Insight, helping you better understand where are the high priority risks versus maybe some of the risks that might seem to be important but potentially could be managed later on or maybe mitigated through other means. And of course, our overall enterprise security management capability is focused now on, I think, one of the big challenges of security today, which is big data. There's a lot of information out there, a lot of security information out there. Being able to mine those different data stores using Hadoop and HP Autonomy technology to help you, again, turn that flood of information into actionable security insight. Well, that's a great summary about what large enterprises need to do with respect to security and HP's approach to security. Thank you very much, Paul Mueller, Vice President of uh, Strategic Marketing for HP Software. Great to have you here, Paul. It's been a great pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is John Dodge, Community Manager of the Enterprise CIO Forum. We'll see you again.